Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. My name is Tyler Lassard. I'm the VP Marketing and Chief Video Strategist here at Vidyard and welcome to another big day here at Startup Grind. It's my pleasure to kick off the day with a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Because here at Vidyard, we are a scale-up company. We've been around for just over 10 years. And over that time, much like many of you, we've not only been building products, building our customer base, but we've been building a market. We've been building an ecosystem and we've been investing in sales and marketing and content and thought leadership to help us grow this ecosystem around us. And like many of you, uh, we continue to build our communities, to engage people in new ways and to find out how to stand out from much bigger and established competitors, from legacy vendors who can't move as quickly as we do. And I'm here today to share a little bit with you of what I've learned about how to use video, which is the area that I'm focused on, to grow your own business, but also how we've seen others in the community doing this today. And in fact, I'm here over the next 15 minutes or so to share with you three stories that I want you to be able to take away as inspiration and ideas for how your own business can grow faster, can grow more efficiently, can find more opportunities using the power of something that most of your competitors, frankly, aren't doing today. So remember, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. As I share these stories with you, I want you to think about it, how it could apply to your own business and how you can start doing these right away because the tools and services and people to do all of these, you have available at your disposal right now. This doesn't require any new budget or any new skills. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I wanna kick you off with story number one for the day. And my first story is actually about buying a car. It's not about technology, it's not about SaaS, it's about buying a new vehicle. Now, about a year ago, it was actually about nine months ago, I was in a position personally where I had to buy a new vehicle. My lease on my previous car was up and I had to go out and find something new. And it was a very interesting time because we were just in the heart of the lockdown with the pandemic. And as a buyer, I couldn't even go into a local car dealership to take a test drive, even if I had wanted to. And I was almost forced into this digital buying experience, but something really interesting happened, something almost miraculous, because the experience I had as a buyer was actually better than anything I've experienced before in the traditional way that these organizations were selling and marketing. And as you may appreciate, this is not at all how it, what it looks like to buy a car in today's modern world. If you Google you know, buying a car, these are the kinds of images that will show up. But the reality is we all know, right? just like our own businesses, people search online, they watch videos, they check out reviews, they look at the specs, they narrow their search down, they do the majority of their buying process in front of their computers. And once they've narrowed it down, they'll reach out to a few local uh, vendors or uh, dealerships, or maybe they won't even, maybe they'll go direct online and find a vehicle to purchase. And in my experience, about nine months ago, something really interesting happened. As I was searching around online, I submitted my information to three local dealerships. They all had vehicles that ma somewhat matched the specs of what I thought I was looking for. And the first two dealerships, much like many tech companies and everybody else that I reach out to, responded with something like this. We all know it, right? Our inbox is full of stuff that looks like this. It was your typical form email, thanks so much for your interest, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I think it said unprecedented at least three times. And it was fine, right? Like it was a good informational message, but it did very little to get me excited about working with them. And in fact, they said at this time, we can't have you come into the dealership, but I'm happy to answer your questions over a phone call and so on. Now, the next email I got was a little bit different. And this is a direct screenshot from my inbox, folks. This is an email I got from a rep at another car dealership later on that same day. And this email included a video. Super interesting, right? It looks a lot better than the first one. So I click play on this video. His name is Will Hurren. He's a sales car rep down uh, at a dealership uh, not far from my home. And I click play and I watch this and Will introduces himself. He says, hey, it's Will Hurren down at the dealership. I want to introduce myself as your account rep here because um, I'll be working with you. And by the way, we actually have a vehicle very close to the specifications that you put into your submission. And I wanted to show it to you right now. We've got it here on the lot. So even though you can't come in, let me show you what it's all about. And he did this on his phone in his case, and he actually walked me through the vehicle. And he showed me what he liked about it. He like crawled into the hatchback and showed me how much space there was. 
he showed me a couple of things that he thought were particularly great about that vehicle. And within about six to seven minutes in this case, I had almost all my questions answered. I had met this great sales rep. He seemed very trustworthy and knowledgeable to me. And I never had to actually go into the dealership. I didn't have to book time, right? I didn't have to schedule an appointment. It was self-service, on-demand, real-time visual, just like, well, I like to consume information. What was also really interesting was this sales rep, right? Think about this in your own business. He got in front of my entire buying committee very quickly because I called in, in this case, it was my kids and my wife, right? They all had a stake in our vehicle. I called them and I said, hey guys, check out this. And they watched this video and they saw the vehicle and all these things. And by the end of it, of course, the kids are like, that's great. Let's get it. When do we get it? Um, and, uh, and it was a really interesting experience. So what I want to emphasize here is this power of putting control actually back into your buyer's hands, using tools like video to introduce yourself, to share information and stop forcing them to do things they may not want to do, like have to book a meeting or schedule a call. Now, this isn't something that, of course, just car dealerships are doing. In fact, I don't think many of them are actually doing this. I thought this was a pretty unique case. But in the world of startups, in the world of tech, across all different industries, this is now happening. And I encourage you, whether you're a startup, an organization working with startups, however it is you fit into the ecosystem, is I want you to think about this as the new way for reaching out to prospects as a way to stand out from those bigger competitors. Because I'm telling you, this stuff works. And in fact, it's free to do. There's tools out there, including Vidyard, the company I'm with, that you can sign up for, start recording and sending videos via email, via social channels and others, to deliver better messages out to your prospects and customers. And those who are winning with this, that are seeing two to three times higher response rates, are getting really creative with this medium. And that's the power of being in a startup. Because large enterprise organizations that try to do this, they often struggle because they're trying to figure out, well, how do we get the brand right and all these things? Meanwhile, scrappy startups have sales reps that are just running and gunning. They're going, great, hit record. I'm gonna get creative. I'm gonna deliver my message. I'm gonna send my prospect a video rather than just that email as a way to go outbound, as a way to respond to an inbound inquiry or whatever it happens to be. So I'm telling you, this stuff works and it's so easy to do, but most sales teams haven't figured it out yet. So this is a competitive advantage for you right now in the market. And it not only helps you be a better sales team because of your ability to deliver your messages visually and more personally, but it's actually more effective and more valuable for your prospects and buyers. And I promise you, if you do this right, they will thank you and they'll say, wow, I can't, you know, this was really great. Thank you so much for explaining it that way, for introducing yourself. It's not something your competitors are doing. It happens all the time. All right, so that's a quick moment of inspiration for you. I've got resources at the end to know how you can go and start doing this today in your own team. But it works, give it a shot. All right, folks, story number two is a story I like to call talk to sales. It's actually a button. And I want to ask all of you out there as startups, when somebody is learning a little bit about your business and they're going to your website, because you know that is your center of gravity online, right? You've done all this work to start to get engagement out there. Maybe you've got an inbound strategy kicking in, you're bringing people in. What do they tend to see when they're on your website? Now, most tech companies today, talk to sales, book a meeting, um, schedule time are their main calls to action. But let me ask you a question. This is the interactive part of the session here. Drop your notes in the comment. I'd love to hear what, what you have to say. If you put yourself in the shoes of a prospect, if you were on a company's website to learn about them, or if you were on your own website to learn about your business and you were a prospect. Let me ask you this, which of these three calls to action would you be most likely to engage with? Talk to sales, book a demo, or watch a demo? Now, when I ask folks this, and I have a room full of you know real audience, I see hands fly up when I say, watch a demo, right? And usually there's a few people that are like, yeah, I like to talk to sales. I like somebody to explain things to me. And at some point, yes your prospects, you need to get them to talk to your sales team. But if the experience that you would prefer on your website would be to actually see it in action, then I promise you that would be the same response that your buyers have. And many of us are missing opportunities to show rather than just tell what we can offer and to meet buyers today where they want to be met, which is just like in that example with the car dealership, let me see it, right? 
Show me, don't just tell me. Let me learn on my own time without having to fill in that dreaded form to book time with a sales rep and get on a call because most people don't want to buy like that anymore. But many of us are stuck in that old way of doing things. I want to give you a quick example of somebody who's doing this incredibly well. Um, and this is something you can go check out yourself, try it and replicate this kind of experience. Marketo, right? And now uh, granted a bigger company than, than many of you out there. But Marketo is a marketing tech company that uh, provides a variety of solutions around marketing automation, email marketing, and so on. Now, if you look at their website, you can go to it, open up another tab, go to marketo.com. I'll highlight what's really interesting is that you'll see their main calls to action are all view a product tour or watch a demo. They don't even have talk to sales or book a meeting on here. Now, why are they doing this? Well, they found that by swapping it to view a product tour, they've increased their website conversion rate by over a thousand percent. It's ridiculous, but it makes sense, right? Because people are like, of course I wanna watch a product tour. Like, yeah, I'm here to learn. This sounds great. I don't have to talk to a rep. Now, once you're in there, they have their interactive tour overview, which is about four minutes. And then they have deep dive videos. This is like the tech version of Netflix here, folks. They've got nine different demo videos that are real demos. They're not just mock-ups and you know, B-roll footage. They're actually like screen share style videos walking you through how their products work. Now, what's brilliant about this is as a buyer, right? this is a really great experience. Again, I can self-serve, I can learn what I wanna learn. But as a marketing and sales team, What's really interesting is if you've got things set up correctly, you can be tracking behind the scenes. So they actually have a form that you have to fill out to get in here and they actually see very high conversion on that. And once you're here, they're tracking which videos are you watching? How long are you engaging? And based on that, they will drive those leads over to their sales team. They also have a button in here that of course now says book a custom demo with sales. But this has become one of their top pipeline generators because they're giving their prospects what they want. And it's very efficient because now they don't have to hire more sales reps just because more people are clicking the talk to sales button. They're actually focusing their time on those who are engaging. And they found they can convert their qualified people faster because they let them binge on this content. They see what they're doing behind the scenes and then they focus their sales team on those that are actively engaging, right? Super smart, super simple. But again, most companies aren't doing this big or small. And I encourage you to think about something like this, especially if you've got a product that people don't necessarily just get and you have to explain lots of different ideas or show it where seeing is believing. All right, we're good, watch a demo. Okay, story number three, folks, is one that I like to call thought leadership, inbound content, call it what you will, but more and more businesses, startup and large, are putting more and more content out there on their social media channels, on their websites, on their blogs, to build their brand and to drive more inbound lead flow by answering questions people have, by creating domain authority and all these great things. Now in today's world, again, the question for all of you to ponder is, as you're learning about a topic, what kind of media formats do you prefer to engage with? Is it blogs, eBooks, videos, webinars, podcasts? There's actually more I could add to this list. And the answer typically to this is quite varied in fact. Some people will say, yeah, I'm a blog reader, that's my gig. Some people will say, I love videos, I like to be able to see things. Others will say I'm a podcast junkie, right? But most people will actually say, I like mixed medium. I like to be able to read things, then I like to be able to see them, and I like to be able to listen to them in the background. And modern content strategies need to evolve to embrace these different ideas. And one of my favorite examples is the godfathers of inbound themselves, HubSpot, who has invested in incredible video content. Now, again, granted, they have a bigger team, bigger budgets than most of you out there. But the reality is the majority of the content they're creating we can all create. It's shot with an individual person in front of a background. Sometimes they've got some basic graphics in front of them, but they're educational, helpful videos. They get their real people out there on camera and they help them build their brand in different ways. And this, again, for a startup is an opportunity for you to get scrappy because larger organizations still struggle with how their brand evolves to incorporate this kind of video content. They still worry about what if one of my employees leaves and they're in one of my old videos. Right? But as a modern startup, as a tech company, if you are, this is an opportunity for you to put yourselves out there to build thought leadership, to earn trust in the market, and to ultimately bring people into your story in new and creative ways. You can check out HubSpot's website, their YouTube channel. There's so much out there, you get it. But most companies aren't investing in it and saying, this is a core part of how we message. But in today's world, this can absolutely be a differentiator for you. So 
I wanted to close here with some follow-on items. If what I've talked about here piques your interest, if you're nodding your head and saying, of course, my sales rep should be sending videos instead of same old emails. Of course, we should be doing more with video on our websites to offer on-demand demos and track who's viewing. Um, then, and of course, we should be investing in more video for inbound, but how the heck do we do it? Then I encourage you to check out some of these resources on here. You can go to our website at Vidyard. We publish a heck of a lot of content ourselves to help you learn about video for marketing, for sales, video production, getting started. So lots of great resources there that are all free and ungated to access. You can get going with a tool like Vidyard for your sales reps who wanna be able to record and send custom videos, just sign up. Just go to vidyard.com slash free and sign up. And finally, feel free to connect with myself on LinkedIn. If you have any questions about what you heard here, if you'd like more advice on how to stand out with video in today's world um, or how to get going with any of these tools and ideas. So with that, I hope you have an incredible day here at Startup Grind. Thank you so much for tuning in and all the best in your marketing and sales and business growth efforts. Thanks everyone.